welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and we do fountain pens and all kinds of things around here. And today it is, well, it is a fountain pen, but not just a fountain pen. You may recognize this as the Lamy Studio with that iconic propeller clip and this beautiful blue color that you know I just like. My wife got this for me last Christmas and I have really enjoyed this pen. There are some things about it that I would change, some things I definitely would keep. And so we'll look at a review of the pen itself and go through pros and cons, but I also want to share with you uh, one of the things that's great about Lamy Studios and Safaris and all of the pens that use those same nibs. They're interchangeable. And I don't know, a couple of months ago, I ordered some extra nibs from Applebaum and they came in weeks ago. Uh, actually, they came in very quickly. And I have now fine, this came with a medium. I have fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 stub, which is what's on the pen right now. So I wanna show you, if you're not familiar with this line of products, how versatile any of these pens that use these nibs really are, because you can just swap them out on the fly, but also uh, show you how each of those nibs write. So from fine to broad to stub, we'll be able to look at all of those nibs in this review today. So let's flip that camera and get looking at those nibs. All right, let's take a look at the Lamy Studio. This is such a nice matte blue finish. I absolutely love this color. For my taste, they nailed it. I, I really like that. And, and so that was part of what drew me to the pen. Now, I already had a hankering for a Lamy Studio, but this color really put it over the top. And so I begged my wife, and she came through last Christmas with this pen. I also really like, and I, I don't know if this is a uh, you like it or you don't kind of a thing, but it, I could see that maybe being the case. But I really like this uh, propeller clip. It, you know, it's just something different. It actually does function well. That curve at the end of it certainly uh, makes it easy to go over a shirt pocket, and it is quite sturdy, very stiff, well-made clip, and I actually like it. It's just something a little bit different. If you look at it head-on, uh, it's not necessarily all that unusual, but then when you hit the side of it, it is quite unusual. So I like that. Uh, of course, this is the Lamy name uh, there. The uh, finial is just polished chrome finish here and at the bottom of the barrel. And so outside, there's not a lot here. This is a clean, modern design. And that's something that uh, the Germans are kind of known for anyway. And Lamy certainly embraces Bauhaus design in the 2000 and things like that. So really nicely done. Really really pretty pen. And uh, this year, the color is more, I believe, is it an aquamarine? I'll, I'll put the name up there. I've forgotten the name of the color, but uh, it's a good looking pen too. But this, this is my favorite so far. Let's go ahead and look at the other parts of the pen. Now, some people, as soon as you take that cap off and they see this metal section, they are running for the hills. And let's just go ahead and get a con right out of the way. Uh, that can be one. Uh, it is a slippery uh, chromed section and not crazy slippery. I can write with it comfortably uh, here in my air-conditioned office. However, if, if you're in a place that's hot and humid with no relief, this might drive you nuts. Or if you just have naturally sweaty hands, because uh, because that's a thing, that's okay. Don't be ashamed of that. It's just, you know, some people do. Uh, certain temperatures, I do. So, uh, and I live in Texas. We hit those temperatures if I'm not in my office. So anyway, uh, that's going to be, for some people, a downside. Some of them, it's going to be an outright deal breaker. I will tell you this, and this goes on my con. That would be one of my cons. If you buy the stainless model of this pen, it's going to cost a little bit more. It's considered a special edition. You know how that goes. Uh... Then you get actually a rubberized section. And here's what I would suggest to Lamy if they were asking, and of course they're not, but if they were, uh, I would offer that section uh, on, on the studio line period. Make it an option, anybody who wants it. Uh, I don't care if you pay, if you had to pay a few dollars extra for it, that's, that's fine, uh, but make it an option because for some people that would be the difference in whether they get this pen or not. 
You know, I have that Hongbian pen, which is kind of similar, but it's thinner. I don't think it's a copy. It's just similar. Uh, it has a brushed finish here that is really good looking and also provides for a little bit more traction. I think the girth of this over the Hongbian plus that etched finish would also provide for some people enough of increased grip to change their minds. But that rubberized thing, that's a thing, guys. Y'all ought to think about that. Uh, whenever you're in a meeting at the Lamy boardroom, you know, studio, rubberized grip, across the line, that should go up for vote. Anyway, uh, other than that, you know, I, I love the look of this, so uh, I just kind of get past it. But, but not everybody can. Not everybody does, and that's okay. I like it. It's a beautiful pen, very simple. It has that standard uh, Lamy nib, which we'll look at here in a second when we look at all the nibs. Okay, so it is a Lamy proprietary converter, and it takes, of course, Lamy cartridges. So for some people, proprietary, that's going to be a thing. Uh, you know, If you know it going in and you're okay with it, then it's absolutely fine. I do the cartridge because, as you can see there, I do the Lamy blue ink in this pen. Um, I like that ink. Not everybody does, but I do. And uh, so that's that. Now that we have looked at what is a very simple and yet elegant design, how about we focus on the nib? You will notice that what I have here now is a 1.1 millimeter stub. What I like about these pens is that you can do that. And of course you can do that with sixes and fives as well, but the Lamy uh, design of this nib is meant to be modular. And so they offer uh, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, the 1.1 stub, and there may be others. Those are what were on my radar. And uh, it's just a really quick swap out of the nib. All you have to do, and I'm not gonna swap it out because I've done something else uh, to make this review a little bit smoother, uh, but you simply uh, pull that nib off. I would use like, you know, a little rubber sheet uh, type thing and pull that nib off and slide the other one on. And that is it. I mean, that it's really that simple. And of course, Lamy makes a good nib. I will give a shout out completely unsponsored. This is just my, uh, consider this a review of a store. Uh, Apple Balm has a good supply of these nibs. So do Goulet and, and others. Uh, but the Apple Balm was where I found the best deal. Even with the international shipping, I was able to get these for almost down to half what they are in U.S. stores. So you might want to consider looking over there uh, when you get ready to get one of these extra nibs or a few nibs. I bought actually a few nibs combined with something else on order. So, uh, but this is the 1.1 millimeter stub. All right, let's take a look at the Lamy Studio and how it writes, work through these nibs. I didn't mention it does post and it posts securely. I usually write with it unposted. Whoops. Now this is, of course, Lamy Studio, and this is the 1.1 millimeter stub. Now, one thing I noticed about this is uh, it's not. I have some other 1.1s that write a broader line. So it's kind of, that's kind of funny. 1.1 should be a fairly objective measurement, but you know how that goes. That's like buying a two by four. And so this one is a little bit narrower than other 1.1 stubs that I have, uh, but it does provide a good variation. It does have a bit of a sweet spot more than some. I have some that are a little bit smoother, a uh, little bit more forgiving. Uh, this has a definite spot that it wants to be in. The ink, I think, I mentioned earlier that it was the Lamy Blue, and it usually is. But when I started writing, I realized and remembered that I had filled it up with Diamine Oxford Blue when it ran dry at home, and I didn't have any Lamy. I, I, I got rid of what little bit of residue was there and put this in, So, because uh, I had written it completely dry, pretty much. As dry as you can get it. Now the nice thing about a stub, that's what I like about it, is that while you might have to find a sweet spot, you can generally just write as you normally would 
and get some good variation. I'm not trying to do anything special here. I uh, just give you an idea of what, whoops, of the fact that I can't count today. It's a Saturday counting. It's off today. I don't have to do it. I'm done. <laughs> Let's try the wetness. Fairly, you know, moderately dry, not too wet, uh, but it will keep up. Let me just do a squiggle so that you can see. It's going to keep up. I don't ever have any problems with skipping or hard starts or anything like that with this pen or with the broad nib. And we'll come back to that pen with the medium nib here in a second. In the meantime, we're going to work our way down. So here I have a Lamy Safari. And this nib will go on the studio, although an all black on that studio would look odd, I think. Uh, but I bought this nib to put on this pen. Uh, this came with a fine because I just wanted to try their broad nib. And I wasn't sure exactly what it, whether I'd like it or not like it, but I do. It's a little bit of a light ink today. I had to uh, wet that nib a little bit. There was a little bit of dry out, which is really unusual with this pen. Um, let's see here. So this is the broad And do the wetness on that. See, not really that different. This is a broad line, so obviously there's going to be more. And even though you can't tell it at the moment, because I did have to dip that in water a little bit, this is noodlers. Now it's coming through. Midnight blue. And uh, this pen, too just writes really well. Need to write a little bit bigger though if you're gonna write with a broad. Okay, so uh, I've got this because there is ink in this pen. I'm gonna try not to make a huge mess, but you just simply grip that nib off of that pen. I'm gonna put that over there. It's a little messy. And line that up. Slide that back on there. And just like that, you swapped the nibs. We'll give that a second. Here we go. This is, of course, the Lamy Studio with a medium nib. And of course, you know what that ink is. And that actually seems to write a little bit wetter than it did with the stub. You notice this is a good thick line. It is, it is. let's see here. So that is the medium. Where's that broad? And this. Is that driving y'all nuts that that doesn't have four? <laughs> What in the world? So, not a huge difference, but the broad, maybe it's not going to come across on camera all that well. It is slightly thicker. Uh, just in case. I'm going to fix that. It's, it's driving us all nuts, right? And the medium. So, the broad's a little bit thicker. You can kind of tell that. Uh, if those were the same ink, I think it would show a little bit more. I think that medium uh, has a, a blue in it that just kind of shows its thickness a little bit more, if that makes sense. So, there's, so we're moving down to the fine. And this is just in a normal Lamy Safari black. This was my first one. If you've seen that video. Yeah, now see, that's Lamy blue, you can tell. So that other definitely is not. That's what I thought. So, fine. Woo! I poked through the paper. That's what I get. Writing too hard with a fountain pen. Okay, so then that shows you wetness too. Fairly, you know, consistent. This was, this was more with that medium, but that's kind of a wet medium nib, I've noticed. Uh, and that's interesting when you think about it, because this stub 
and the medium were on the same pen with the same ink. And yet you do see that difference in how those perform. So there you go. That's about as uh, precise as mid-80s Russian architecture, according to the apartment that I lived in. <laughs> it was about this plum, you know? Uh, anyway, that gives you some idea of the fine. I guess we'd go ahead and do a little bit of that. But you get the idea. And you can definitely tell it's a fine compared to the medium and the broad. So you get all of these options with it. And here's something else that you can do, which is kind of funny. Uh, this pen is... Uh, a wing sung, and I'll put the link up to the review of this pen, which in that review, I mentioned uh, that, you know, I, one of the things I liked about this is it didn't look like other pens that I saw. Well, now I know, and some of you know, uh, that this is actually uh, styled after another German pen by Online, the Online Pen Company. It's just not one that was even, at the time I did the video, I, you never saw it in American stores. However, uh, there's at least one or two, I think JetPens has the Online Pen now, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what they did. But their nib is a Lamy-styled nib. If I wanted to, I don't, uh, but if I wanted to, that nib I just took off the studio, that stub, would fit on this pin and vice versa. This actually has a, uh, what size is that? Medium. Uh, this is a bobby, whoops, that's a little bit dried out. Oh, well, there you go. We're going to do this in real time. This is a bobby nib uh, or a bobby suggested nib. And now that that's watered down, you may have a hard time seeing it. But that is Noodler's Apache Sunset. Now it's coming through well. And this is a medium. Let me just say, this medium nib, which is... You know, I don't have a clue who actually makes it, but it's a Bobby suggested nib I bought from Bobby on Etsy. And I did it because this Wingsung nib was okay. But uh, I thought, you know, let me just try his in a medium because it was in a fine. And medium's not available on this pen. And I bought it, and I really do like this nib. Now, that's actually the first time that I've had it uh, have a, a hard start. But if you'll notice, I'm also... Just nearly out of ink, too, so that could be partly at play there. Because uh, generally, whoops, this pen has been quite reliable. Although, right here, we got the camera out, and it's it's not going to be. It ran into another, another something. Anyway. Kind of hard to tell what's going on with that, but... Uh, that's kind of interesting. Those nibs are, are swappable. You might have the wing sign and you want to just try the Lamy nib, but you don't want to buy a Lamy pen. Well, you know, you could do that. You could use this as a nib holder for a Lamy nib and uh, try that out. And then, you know, maybe maybe that's your gateway to the Lamy drug. I don't know. It might be like that because uh, that's, that's the way it's played out for me. You know, I didn't even want a Lamy, and then I got a Lamy, and then I got a Lamy, and then I got a Lamy, and I've got actually, I have a Lamy that should be arriving here from Apple Bohm, uh that I bought the other day, and it just continues on. But that studio, go back to the beginning, that studio Beautiful pen. I really like it. High quality pen. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with it as long as you're comfortable with a smooth metal section. That, for most people, is going to be the make or break deal. But if you're okay with it or if you're looking for a pen that you're not going to use for, you know, six hours of notes at a meeting in meetings. Oh, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Six hours of meetings. Wow. I think a part of my brain just spasmed. Uh, but if you've got six hours of meetings or you're taking classes, yeah, maybe you don't want to write with that one. I uh, get you one of those for those longer sessions. But, a pen to keep in your pocket. Maybe you've got to sign some things. Maybe you're just sending short notes to people and, and things like that on a particular day. No big long sessions, but writing different things. Wonderful, wonderful pen and a good looking pen and really well made. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it and I uh, think my wife did well last Christmas. All right. God bless you. Uh, we're, we're approaching Thanksgiving as this video is being made. So I pray that 
however you have to celebrate it, I know it's going to be kind of weird this year uh, that you and your family are doing well and that even in the midst of all the craziness, uh, that we all take some time to stop and to realize there are a lot of things we have to be thankful for. If we can still watch uh, videos about pens as big picture, unimportant as they may be, then life is pretty good, isn't it? And we've got a lot to be thankful for. God bless you and have a great week.